Welcome back guys, this is always back with another video on the channel. It's been long since I've made the video. So today I'm back with another JavaScript tutorial. This is going to be JavaScript callback. Now we're going to be looking into JavaScript synchronous callbacks and asynchronous and we're going to try explaining everything you need to know about JavaScript callback functions. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright guys, so now let's talk about callback functions or you can call it a high order functions in JavaScript. So callback functions, also known as high order functions, and is a function that is passed to another function. We'll look at the example in a second, but let me give you a quick introduction. So a function that is passed into another function as a parameter is called a callback function. Now a callback function is essentially a pattern established solution to a common problems. And therefore the use of a callback function is also known as callback pattern. Now we are going to have a look at the example now. So let's start typing a code. All right, so the first we're gonna look at synchronous callback function. Basically in simple words, synchronous callback functions in JavaScript means when you call a callback function, it happens straight away. So it would not wait, it actually execute that code and then jump to the next code. Now let's look at a synchronous callback function. So what we can do here, we can create an array. So we'll just say animals. I'm gonna create an array of dog and then cat and then horse. And we can just add another kangaroo, right? So we got an array of animals here. Now we are going to call a for each function on this. So what we can do here, we can type animals dot for each. So it's a, a trader on an array. So it will go to every single value according to the index and then call this function, which we're going to call a callback function. So we'll just add a parenthesis here. And here we can see the suggestion from real strict code is a callback function. So we'll just say function and then we pass a parameter val here. So what it will do, it will just grab one dog and push that here into the parameter of callback function val. Now here we are going to type the logic. So what we want to do, we basically want to console it on the log. So console log, right? So we'll just say console dot log and then we just print out a val as a value. Right, so I'm gonna refresh this page and then there you go. So we got dog, cat, heart. So this is a iterator function on an array. So it basically went index one, grab that value, push it here, and then we are using a console log to print that in a console. Now this is a synchronous callback function, which means the, the compiler will come here and it will execute this function before going anywhere else. So this is an inline callback function. Now we could just change this as well. What we can do here, we can just separate this. So we can make a function here. We're gonna name it callback and we can just get val and then we can just console.log and we can do val on the top as well. So here I'm just going to delete everything and I'm just gonna call a callback function, what we created on the top. So basically this will execute after callback. All right, so this will basically, when we call a traitor on animal array, it will call this callback function there. We just named it callback, you can, you, can, you can name it whatever you like. So after this function, this is a synchronous callback function. So I'm gonna save this, it will run the same as we write the inline callback function, right? So we can call it, we can create another function and we can use that function within another function as in a parameter, which is called a callback function. So we've seen the synchronous callback function, which means it happens immediately. Now I'm going to give you two examples of asynchronous callback function. Now, what is the asynchronous callback function? Let me give you an example. So let's say you've got the, a code which is going to retrieve a data through AJAX post. Now you send a request and maybe let's just say server is slow and it gives you a response of 200 milliseconds or 500 milliseconds. Now, do you want to wait for that response to come back or you want to keep compiling your code and when the response come back and then call that function? So that would be asynchronous, which means it's non-blockable. So Java compiler, sorry, JavaScript compiler will keep executing the code and once the 
uh, response come back from a service, it will call that function. Now let's look at that first. So we can use uh, jQuery for jQuery get method, or we can just create an XML HTTP request object. So let me just delete this, right? Let's just get rid of all of these uh, functions. All right, so let me show you one thing. I've got a JSON file here. So this is the animal JSON file here. So we are going to retrieve this JSON data using Ajax post. So there's going to be two types of uh, parameters that we're going to talk about in that. So let's go to script.js file. And here I'm just going to create a function which uh, we can call that function on a button click. So here index.html, I've got this button. So on click, it will call this load data function. So yeah, let's go and create that function. So we'll just say function load data. And inside that, we are going to create a variable, xhttp variable, which is going to have a new instance of uh, object of x ml http request and then after that we are going to define uh, how we're going to send this request what method of this request is what is the url it's going to go to and if it's asynchronous or synchronous so let's do that so i'm going to use that xhttp object now dot we just open the connection first and here we have three parameters to pass in the first one is going to be a method which can be get post update delete or other options available as well so the next parameter we are going to type is a url which is going to be as a string type next we have a boolean value which is going to be asynchronous or synchronous so synchronous if you set that to false it's going to call synchronous function and if it's a asynchronous then you have to set a boolean as a true so let's do that so i'm going to type get method and then after that i'm gonna add a url of our animal.json file so type animal.json file comma and then i'll make it asynchronous and then we just send this object so use xhttp dot send and there you go now here we have a few things to talk about now let's say we send a request to this url and the send request is gone but hasn't come back yet so what we want to do here we want to retrieve that animal.json file data with this asynchronous callback so now once we send the request we don't want to wait for response to come back for the request and we just want to carry on compiling the rest of the code so let's see how we do it so we're going to use this xhttp object i'm going to call a method on it so on ready state change is equal to anonymous function and inside that we use a condition so if we say this dot ready state is equal to four and this dot status is equal to 200 all right so once this becomes true then we are going to create another variable so i just want to get the data and i pass that data into a json object so we'll just do animal is equal to json dot parse and this dot response text so now what's happening here is basically we send a request here the spend as request is gone to this animal.json file and now when the response come back and it says that x http uh, on ready state change then we call a callback function now we get into this function and we see that if the ready state was is equal to 4 and status is equal to true 200 then we get down to this one so now we are retrieving a response text for our ajax post which is just a simple text but we are retrieving a json file which has a json data in a text form so that means we can convert that into a json object so this is what I'm doing here. So I just created a variable and we use the json.parse and this does response text and we pass that into a JSON object. And then I can just do console.log animals. All right, so now if I just uh, save this and we we'll go to our file and I click on load data, 
so we got the breakpoint there, I'm just gonna cancel out. I'm gonna go to console and I'm gonna pause the debugger and there you go. So we got the JSON data printed in our console. Now let's say that we have another console log after this. So now here we can see we just say console.log and we can just say response is back. Okay, I'm gonna save it. Now if I click on load data, now this animal object should get printed first, right? Well, let's see what happens. So I'm gonna click on load data and now what happens is when it comes down to this line, it sends this request, it gets the request back and then once it gets back, then we can see that we got this console.log and we got the console log responses back. Now what if I just cut this and we just don't wait for response to come back and let's see what happens now. So now if we send the request and then request goes in there and then it comes back and it sees the status is four, sorry, your status is 200 and ready state is four, then it comes down to console.log but it won't wait for the response to come back. In fact, we'll just go down and do this console log as well. So let's just load the data. And now you can see that we got the responses back printed first, but we can see we got this, uh, we got this uh, uh, request sent as well. But if even if I just push this line, let's just say down. So now what's gonna happen is, we already send the request before we get to this line, right? But still, if we go and click on load data, responses back is getting printed first. Why? It's because it's asynchronous. So this response is not gonna hold back our browser and wait for the response to come back and do the processing with the response. In fact, it will just carry on compiling the code. So that makes the browser asynchronous so that means it's not gonna block our functionality or our website. Now, if I make this to false, so let's just say make it false, I'm gonna save it, and let's just load the data. And now, because we made this synchronous, now it should print out animal.json object first, and then it should go to the next line because it's a synchronous, so this should happen immediately, not just, you know, it send the data and send the response, send it, Ajax post and wait for the response. So let's just try that. I'm gonna click on the load data and there we go. So now our compiler comes here and looks at it as an synchronous callback. And now it is not going to jump to this console.log statement. In fact, it's just gonna wait there and wait for the response and finish the processing of our response and then go to the next line. And now here we have a message here as well. So deprecation, so synchronous XML HTTP request on the main thread is deprecated because of its detrimental effect to the end user experience. So now this is going to block the browser. So well, what happens is if you have one response and you have millions of other things to happen, so those things will not happen until this response is back. And for some reason, let's say if the response was not all right, it didn't come back. So if I just say to 100, I'm just gonna save it. And now let's just load the data and there we go. So as you can see that if the response didn't come back or something happened to it, and if we didn't have this condition, all right, and that means it will break our application. So luckily we had this as an if statement, but otherwise if we just go here and we'll just say let's just say for some reason the server is slow or down and it doesn't bring the data back that means it's going to break the program so that is asynchronous callback function now we have another function which is a built-in function which is another asynchronous so we have a set timeout function and then we have this uh, and here we can just say function and then we got this and then here we can just say console.log and then we'll say hello and then we are going to go down. I'm just gonna 
uh, this here and then here we have about a timeout so we can say one second and we can say let's just say five thousand so after five thousand second it's going to run this code so if i just go and after five seconds we should see hello world printed on the console so that's the asynchronous function built in asynchronous function which basically doesn't wait for anything happen so here we have let's just say after this so we have a console log and we say waiting waiting for uh, hello on console now this statement it should be print first because it's an asynchronous callback function here we have an asynchronous callback function that means it's not going to block our browser so which are really good now i'm going to cover the topic promises which are same kind of a concept uh, which makes our web development web, web stuff very easy so we will do that in the next video so here we just go and then we can refresh the page and here we got this straight away waiting for hello on console and after five seconds we got this hello printed on the console so that's the asynchronous callback functions and there's more uh, to to this but i hope you understand what is the difference between asynchronous and synchronous callback functions in javascript all right so thanks for watching guys and i'll see you guys in the next video chase